all of our neighbors are are francophone and don't go to this school. So even though we're we're downtown Gatineau, downtown Hull, minutes from Parliament, we we're kind of an island in this in a very central urban area. It's interesting, and yes, <clears throat> most of the schools here are French, but we still have four English schools that are relatively close in terms of proximity. Mm. Uh, South Hall is only five kilometers away and Lord oh, Elmer and Erdley are, are maybe eight to 10 kilometers. So it's it's not that far, but everything that's beyond just walking distance re- requires buses. If you were trying to bring kids together and buses are expensive now. Yeah, oh, okay. It's out of control. So okay. yes, we're kind of like a little English Anglophone island in the, in the center of downtown Gatineau, downtown Hull. But I, I think it just it gives us opportunities to to be a bit more creative on our own in our own area in our own community and bring our English speaking and our French speaking neighbors into the school into the community and it makes that that the school more alive especially in evenings and weekends where there's more events going on. Oh, what types of things do you do on evenings and weekends? Well, we try to do as much as we can to have different sports nights on Fridays it's ever since COVID instead of having the whole school invited to events and you may only get 50 or 100 or 200 everything's have to be more calculated so now it's a cycle one so grade ones and twos of doing soccer grade fives and sixes doing basketball grade so it's it's everything seems to it's not as easy I think we're getting back to just have 300 people or 400 people oh come God. to the school and not even think about it but all along the last few years everything you've had to think out and overthink and um probably slow this process down of the the back to normal but what we do also on the on the weekends is i open the the gym up every saturday morning and we have parent parent soccer so the kids would would come with their parents and they would be on the stage and watch and we'd let them play at the end but it's it's about 20, 20 parents and myself come in and, and just play. I love just, that. Just play, just play soccer. And that's some Saturday mornings we're like, wow, I could just do other things. And and, and but like what how I kind of brought that into my own family is I bring my my son and daughter with me. And so I'm making it a my own little family event into a school community. But parents love that outlet, love that chance to play themselves because they don't have it. They don't yeah. have very many outlets in, in their lives. And we have a local Cameroonian community. And after we finish with the the uh, parent soccer, they use the gym for for a couple of hours. And one of our teachers is is part of the Cameroonian community. So it's just, it's a hub for different communities within our area. And yeah. I just love when the schools feels alive. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you feel well connected to the community from what I'm hearing. So maybe it's really just the other schools that are difficult to get in touch with, but the community itself seems to be really involved. Yeah, I, I think maybe that's, a, I, don't, I can't speak for our other English schools and our boards, but I, I think the English schools in this part of Quebec anyway, have to do more because we don't have that natural community around us. Yeah. We have to actively build it yeah and by doing that you're constantly having different uh, events it, la- two weekends ago we had uh it was um international or international Aut- autism awareness mm-hmm. day yep. so on a sunday we had a huge events that we had music we had uh guest speakers student speakers we did a walk through through the neighborhood had prizes and food and just autism awareness and it was it brought out 15, 20 staff members on a Sunday and over 150 community members. And just to have that walk and bring attention to, to autism awareness. And, and these are just things that once you start having activities, then someone thinks, Oh, we could do this, or maybe we could, we could also do something, something else. So I love the fact that it's, it's not contagious when you get exciting ideas, but it just makes people want to do something different and it does fun, and fun yeah I agree with you there are like two big pressing questions as you speak that come to my head instantly and it's how and why and I think we'll start with the how where you have all these events you have to be strategic with COVID as well and this is all even outside of your CPSN project which in itself 
has a bunch of moving parts because it's a genius hour with multiple projects. How on earth are you getting all these moving parts together and managing? I'm so <laughs> curious. It's It doesn't happen overnight, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. And it's, and it's when I think about it <clears throat> and it's nothing massive or it's not a, a big idea. It's a lot of little things. It's, it starts with just having your eyes open to seeing new possibilities, to seeing opportunities. And, and it could be as simple as having weekly parent meetings where I, I used to be in person before COVID, once COVID arrived, we started doing them online and just connecting with with parents on a weekly basis, letting them know what events are happening or what decisions are being made at the school. Sometimes the parents agree, they don't agree, but when you have the dialogue, it allows parents to get a, a different perspective. And then building those relationships, they become your allies. And so when you have um, maybe a difficult decision to make, the parents are more under understanding and supportive. But also through these meetings, these weekly meetings with parents, the exchange of ideas. And then a parent will say something. And I'll go, I never thought about that. Or, or I'll say something and somebody else will have another idea. So just the opportunity for the exchange of ideas, the more you can do that with teachers, parents, community members, I just feel the, the health of the school and the, and, and the way you see school is going to, is going to change or, or improve. So I think... It begins with just firstly what you what you didn't ever see that you just didn't realize what was possible and once you see small things happening, then it just it, it builds on on that and and I I can only do so much that this the staff have to get excited about the different yeah. ideas or I can't ask the staff to be here every Friday night Saturday and Sunday that it's not fair and that it won't happen. So yes, there's certain champions that have to to be the the real advocates for certain whether it was autism awareness um, day or a community event with um, just certain fundraisers or sports days. So there's certain people that have to really be the ones that that push through the fact that it's a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning. But I but everyone's got different interests, and so when new ideas are brought forward, and the I always think, yes, that's great. Let's do it. As opposed to, well, I don't know, and overthinking things. So I feel there's a relationship with the staff that's that builds this openness and 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 trust, and 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 then there's an excitement generated because there's more things happening, and then that buzz gets the students and the parents, and I think it's just good for the health of of a community. But it's taken time. It's taken a few years to to get here. And then, oh, yeah. then it's sustaining it. So you can't just say, all right, we did all of this. Right. And COVID was an example of that. It would have been easy just to say, okay, we can't do these things anymore because it's dangerous. Or public health says you can't come together. So we just made sure everything we did was outdoors. We we followed the protocols and the guidelines, but it it built the, the outdoor culture, whether it was through events, all gym classes outdoors, certain classes outdoors, more walks in the neighborhoods, all that is just healthier for everyone. And yeah. and so it's completely transforms the the school, the culture of the school, the way people think, what they see, the new ideas that come forward. I just love it. I love that. It makes sense to me that it all starts with just dialogue and dialogue with the parents, letting them have their voice and then with your staff to let them have their voice. Is that how you found you overcame any staff hesitancy it's by sort of letting them participate and bring in forth ideas? Yeah, and that's that's a difficult one to keep your your finger on the pulse of the the okay. staff because it, there's still just people and teachers who have lives, and if, if you over over commit them to 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 certain events, mm. you, and, and COVID was an example of that. It, everybody was doing twice as much, twice as much to keep kids apart, to follow the protocols, the guidelines, uh, everything the public health was saying, changing day by day, week, week by week, yeah. and then still having to teach, teach with masks, teach, teach outside and teach more outside. And it was just pushing, pushing, pushing. And then when teachers came back this year, they were still exhausted. 
Oh yeah. They were they were shattered. And so I realized in in October, and what didn't change from the, the Ministry of Education is that the evaluation framework was still the same. Yeah. Gaps, gaps, inevitable gaps in learning had taken place over the two and a half years of COVID. Of course, yeah. As much as we did things differently and brought play and the outdoors and innovative uh, activities within class and out of class time, it was exhausting to do all of that. So when teachers came back and then they realized they still had to evaluate a student at the same grade at the same time as previous years, yet the gaps were there. They got stressed because they realized the marks on report cards were going to be a little bit lower because it's inevitable there was there was learning missed there was learning online it wasn't the same as in person mm -hmm. so that stress combined with teachers but still being exhausted I find was very very difficult so you have to know when to just back off yeah and let teachers breathe let them push through something that quite frankly was a bit unfair to them there should have been a message to say COVID might, might be over or, or we've learned to live with it. And there's been a lot of um, things that have happened over the last couple of years, but there will inevitably be gaps in learning. So yeah. expect it. We're going, we're not back to normal. We're getting back to normal, yeah. but just giving a bit of breathing room to teachers and to students from the parents, because the parents put pressure. They see marks are down when you're trying to talk about, we want more play. We want more learning through play. We want more, creativity in 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 our learning and then the pressure and the stress of why are the marks not the same why did the marks dip we just went through a pandemic it's, so there's just things that there's no it doesn't go as smoothly as as you would hope because yeah. life's not like that but you have to recognize when when there's a moment to really push with ideas and a and a time to to step back a little bit and so we've got through all of that and you just feel the the energy and the creativity in the springtime, especially now, is yeah. full blossom. It's good. Oh, that's amazing. I guess CPSN kind of came in at a really difficult time for you all then because we started <laughs> in, what, October? And uh, gosh. Yeah, probably the most the most difficult time. And if I think of the two and a half years of, of COVID, yeah. October of this year was the hardest of the last three years because of those very reasons of yeah. teachers still not feeling recovered yeah. and 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 re-energized from the last two and a half years and then on top of that the stress of those first report cards right. realizing that those gaps those big gaps for some students were were greater than they they realized and so finding the teachers play when there's anxiety when there's stress around is really hard so you just you have to but do those little things, get some, get the coffee on a Friday morning for the staff, mm -hmm. get the, a meal here or there, wherever you can, just to, to put smiles on faces and to, 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 to bring them to, together for positive reasons. And as I said, once we got past the, the holidays, it's um, at Christmas, then, then teachers started to see, okay, we're, we're, we're kids are going to be all right. We're going to be all right. And then there was an exhaling of, of a deep breath and say, okay, and they looked around for all those those creative fun fun activities and for a grade five six teachers students doing the the genius R and blocking time aside just to focus on students interests get them motivated get them with different um other students from different classes creating their own ideas in in the sense that they've never been given this freedom within school because we just tend to push through a curriculum, push through the expectations. And in reality, learning is, 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 can be so much fun. And so when you do some of the activities that we did over the last few months that were to, to learn and to have fun while learning, it's, you, you just realize that the depth of learning and, and the engagement level is, is so different when they're having fun. Yes. Okay. Can we speak a little bit more to your project? Like, how is it going? I I don't even know what specific activities you have going on and running either. It's, I'm curious. It's the, the 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 project. It's it's almost it's almost like a Seinfeld episode where you think in the surface it's all about nothing, <laughs> or, <laughs> or, because the teachers aren't in control of it. It's it's the students, and <laughs> and so it's it, they're. There every second Friday afternoon is just the, the three 
the teachers in the English language arts, the French and the math, they get together and they just block off regular classes. Okay. And then, so there's one, there's five different classrooms and the students go into different <clears throat> classrooms and work on their own projects. It could be robotics. It could be something to do with music. It could be something to do with creating new games. It's anything that they're passionate about. And then we're building these different activities into a huge uh, afternoon day at the school where, where the whole school and community will come and see each, each station, each each all the different things that the students have been working on mm -hmm. and, and just promote the, the, through the theme of learning through play, learning through fun. And I, I'm telling you, there's some, something's changed. Imagine a regular Friday afternoon that students are low in energy and it's like, let's push through this last math concept or let's, yeah. let's look, look at another um, a stanza and a poem and it's, and it's done from a teacher directed way. And you might get some pushback from tired students and you won't get the same level of engagement, but you should just see how these students, how excited they are on Friday afternoons. And it's about learning. It's about some of the soft skills, the collaboration, the leadership, the, the being engaged, the, the following instructions, taking the lead from, from one another. And the, one of the remarks that teachers have made is that these projects that they're working on they take them home and they they talk to their parents and they're online with each other, the students. And so they, it's just brought learning to another level because it's fun and because you make the time. And if we didn't, if we weren't part of uh, a network that focused on, okay, what is your project going to be? Even though on the surface, I can't explain this is the actual project because it's in the students' hands in, in <laughs> terms of, of their, their responsible. And teachers find that really scary. That letting okay. go part, I find, is the biggest leap. And mm -hmm. once they take that leap and they they trust and and leave it and see the benefits, as I said a second ago, see know that students are working at home on this, collaborating with each other, generating more excitement, looking forward to Friday afternoons for reasons other than no school the next the next day. They they go, this is beautiful. So yeah. again, it's those eyes being open to something that they were never open to before, not being in charge. Yeah. And students are brilliant when you give them the chance to be in the lead. And I was over in, in uh, Denmark a couple of times over the last last year. Uh, one second. I'm so sorry. Sorry, really nervous. It's not popcorn. Just leave the popcorn. We'll get after. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I was in Denmark in September and then again last, last month. And I've met these two unbelievable uh teachers from Holland from the Netherlands who, who who set up the Agora school in in Holland which is all about student directed learning for three oh. years the oh. students are in charge of their learning wow. they for the first few weeks of school from grade nine they talk about in interviews they talk about what they're passionate about what interests they have what motivates them then they 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 set up a series of questions of what you would like to do in school. They match them with certain teachers who have similar interests. And for the first couple of years, it's just all student led. They're not following a curriculum. They're not following any directives except what the students want to learn. And then in the last two years of school, they kind of tailor it towards the curriculum and to evaluations. But for the first couple of years, it's all and this is high school. It's all student led. Wow. And they're so successful. There's more and more of these schools, the Agora School in, in the Netherlands. And I and the two guys that I've met on both occasions, Robert and Robert, are uh, are Rob and Rob. So I don't know if that's for Robin, they're from Holland. <laughs> anyway, they're fascinating. So I could just listen to them all day and it, it opened my eyes to something that, yeah, we gotta trust. We've got to give the students the the chance to 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 get excited about their own learning. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it's what you want is the fostering of excitement for learning. I can see the hesitancy on the teacher side. Obviously, I'm team play, but I can see the hesitancy in that, oh, gosh, if we let kids just self-direct themselves, they are going to muck about and waste the time and maybe just take advantage of all of the tools and fun things they can do, but not necessarily try to work towards anything. How would you respond to, to criticism like that? But you obviously have to set up 
parameters. It, it's how yeah. things are established, the routines, the expectations. So it's very methodical. Mm. And even if we think of some of the, the learning through fun opportunities, the, the genius are, the, the, the Friday afternoons, it wasn't as if the teachers just threw out a few blocks of Lego and some some robotic kits and, and, <laughs> and some fun. other and just let close the door say do what you want and it was it's set up in a way that you set them up for success but you 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 draw them in with that 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 piece of of having this freedom being able to and i don't think it's as easy as as it seems for kids just to have a blank slate good. and say whatever you want to do and i'll tell right. you why i feel that way because Three years ago, we we got a grant from the from the Quebec government. To, we became uh, we were selected one of six schools in the province to be the Labécal school. So we were the only English school in Quebec selected, and we got thirty million dollars to build a massive extension onto the school. And when I had that first meeting with the teachers, it's like, okay, so just open your imagination. Imagine if you could create your own school. What would you want? And I remember that first meeting and I was like, they didn't know <laughs> because we're so conditioned to the, these yeah. are the expectations this is what we yeah. know. This is what's been done before. This is what yeah. we've experienced. It just, it took a long time to really ignite that sense of wonder. And um, I was shocked by that. I thought people would um, just instantly be able to say things that they've dreamt about. If only if in my classroom or in the school, what we could do. So over time, we came up with great ideas, but it wasn't that easy, which I was I was shocked by. So the same to kids, it has to be set up in a way that they clearly know what's, what's expected of them, how they're going to achieve whatever project they're they're interested in. And I we've had similar projects in the in the past here. We do a mini chef, and that's we we allow the students to select the the foods. The, the menu for the for the oh, lunch cool. and and they have to research the ingredients they have to promote it mm. the chef helps them buy the ingredients helps them mm. cook they 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 collect all the the forms that come back and the money they cook the food they serve the food they clean up they count to see what profits were made then as a class decide what to do with the profits and we've been doing it for six years and not one student has misbehaved. Not one uh -huh. student hasn't done everything they possibly could in terms of every step of it. And it's so the steps were set out for them. But the point is the instinct within kids mm -hmm. to help, to look after, to take care of, to please. True. Those instincts are inside every kid. And if we can tease them out in really positive ways, this is what changes student behavior student engagement yeah. and just the overall ethos of uh of a school the positive ethos so oh. yeah it's it's again these little things but when you set them up to be successful and it becomes part of the routine and culture in the school then it gets kids excited and could be learning through music learning through movement in in some classes so it's just yeah it gets me you can tell pretty excited about <laughs> I I get it. I think maybe with the responsibility, kids really like to step up to the plate. Could you speak a little, like, just to to be to to understand more specifically what these parameters would look like for myself and for schools who maybe are less experienced but want to do this type of approach? For example, maybe with one of your Genius Hour activities, like, how can a child do a music? thing for an hour but still have these parameters set up that they know they're working towards something or are staying on track in some way yeah I, that's that's a really good question because i don't think it's as it's, it's not like a formula of, okay. of high basically you have to follow these four steps and it's darn that's <laughs> well i think the key of what i've witnessed and what the teachers have said is is how they can skillfully and strategically finds and and prompts the kids when they've got some wild ideas to how they can bring it down into something that is maybe a little more possible and manageable within the afternoons or within right. something they can create but it's it's nudging those kids that could that they know have similar interests and they could sort of give them a little push to say awesome. you guys would be perfect if you worked on creating a music video or i know you both love 
uh, robotics or you 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 love making new games and and so they the teachers know best in terms of which kids and then some kids really struggle to have that the creative ideas or or join different groups so it's if if it's like picking teams on the playground if if who's, you don't want to be the, the last person picked or the second last because emotionally that's not never a good thing for for any child so it's to make sure there's no child left behind so they would have to I've seen them do it with a few kids who didn't have any interests. I don't know what to do. I'm, and I just don't have that excitement within them. So it's finding that and that little group that they could, could join. That's where the teachers have to have that intuition. Oh my gosh. And the ability to, to make sure every kid's included. So yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, it's taking the, the ridiculously big ideas and bringing them down into something that the teachers could imagine would be workable within the class and something that they could they could they could actually either make or or or, or be able to showcase in uh, in in through in the walkabout in the classrooms or the the big um, day we have in in the gym but i think it still comes back to the teachers own the relationships and the the groupings and finding out how to you don't want 20 kids in one group and then two kids in another so i, I think they've they've got their eye on the ball i'm lucky that the, the six five six teachers that are involved really know their kids yes that seems to be important and but again letting letting go was a, it was such a leap was such a, a, a big moment for them that I, I, you i they kept delaying when they would actually really step back and it's good because they're continuing to just and and you have to do this and you have to make sure that's that's these steps are followed. And I think part of that was just delaying because they could they couldn't, <laughs> couldn't let go. Let go. <laughs> yeah. And now they don't want to be back. They've got they've let them go to town and it's 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 good. Have you seen any like conversions from like non-believers to believers in play in your staff? Yeah, it's 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 interesting because you're going to have traditionalists that's that yeah. that have a, a view of education yet what i find with with those teachers who still see education in, through very traditional lens they don't realize that even if it's through osmosis or some kind of 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 adaptive gradual change that their practices have changed, even if it's ever so slightly, mm. even if it's just the buy-in to all the grade threes to be part of a year long musical, they're there in the gym at lunchtime with their kids when they're practicing, they give up some of their English language arts or French or math time to make sure the kids are learning musical notes, learning the song, learning the roles in, in, in the musical. They, that there's buy into this because they see the success. And this is a year long grade three project that that overlaps every subject. And so they're building the musical into other parts of their of their teaching English and French and, and, and even math. So I just find something that maybe they didn't realize that they were introducing play into their core subjects. They have. And it's not forced. They've just done it because this has become a routine, a cultural part of the expectations of the school. And it's just woven in, even if it's ever so subtly, even if they didn't even don't even know what's happening. So That's for so the, cool. the real traditionalists, you would have to say, yeah, they're still learning through play. Yeah, you're and doing it, it and you don't and even realize you think you're still holding yeah, the tradition. Kids but... in classes, grade one, grade two, grade three, when they still go take their, their classes outside. It's not like there's someone I'm standing there saying, you must go outside. It's like they know it's it's the benefits. They know kids need to move. They know that they can incorporate learning so easily outdoors in the forest. It it, it doesn't matter. So it's it does it you're on a continuum of the teachers that are we have Miss Medley, who's who's a musician. She plays the bagpipes. She plays the keyboard. She can play any instrument. She's wow. theatrical. She's just brought the arts into the school over over many years. And recently, Edutopia did a did a video with with her grade three class, and it was it was a poetry unit, and it was um, bringing using movements to to teach vocabulary. And just oh. the, her, her 
theatrical tone and presentation and just using movement. So in, in poetry, words, trying to enhance the words that they were using in their in their poetry. And it was a poem on, on snow. And so she was, you just it looked, and they were only in her room for an hour, the, the filmmaking team, and and watching this five-minute video and the, the, the words that the kids, when she has shivering and billowing and fluttering, and the kids are making movements around the classroom to, to each descriptive word. And then they would write a word down and then they would exchange it with a partner. And then the interviews in the in this video, you you watched real learning through play unfold in a four and a half minute video and oh you go gosh. that is beautiful that it, sounds it's just beautiful. it's so stunning and it's sometimes it could be an ab abstract term learning through play yes. and what does that mean i know and she's taking the <laughs> structures and features of a, of a poem and adding vocabulary and doing that all through movement and so there's a cool. uh, student voice in the in this video of yeah when i move and we say a word, I understand it so much better. Wow. When a teacher says flutter and I'm my body's wow. fluttering, I know what fluttering means. My gosh. Shimmering. And and I just so so simple. And again, yeah. I said this, it's the, the the Seinfeld episode all about nothing. There's nothing <laughs> magical about this. This is so simple, but it's what you choose to see, and then that's what you choose to do. And that's wow. what creates the the culture. Yeah. Can I watch this video? Is this like, a yeah, it's, I, it's on that presentation. It is. Yeah. So if you scroll down, there's two parts, two presentations. One is the trailer for the documentary yes. and the other is the, the video using movement for literacy or. Okay. Perfect. Gym. It's quite incredible. And Edutopia yeah. is the George Lucas Educational Foundation. So that video is on that website. Wow. And that's, it. And I think that's it was cool. up two weeks ago and you could see it's been viewed 30,000 or some, some oh ridiculous 10,000 times or whatever it was. It's, it's a remarkable tool for yes. helping people see what um, the simplicity of learning through play looks like in power. That's it. Yeah. And I really think that's going to be the focus of our spotlight on you guys is sort of how you've all been able to do this. And what I'm seeing the theme from our conversation being is they're just little nudges. Yeah. Just the little things first, nudging, nudging, nudging. And then all of a sudden, look at what your school is. It's just this beautiful environment where the kids need the popcorn now because they're doing the entrepreneurship. They're just so excited. Oh my and goodness. It is, it's that excitement. And, and this is this is not, not a laziness from a principle or self-preservation, but if I have to spend less time disciplining oh, students. Totally. And more time thinking of new ideas, making connections, that rethinking education and and especially through the eyes of a child of what children love, then the whole culture of the school is going to be positive. It's going to to, to be better. And, yeah. and this is not a, this is downtown Hull, this where our school is located. It's, it's a lower socioeconomic area mm -hmm. and probably the most highly transient school population or most mobile school population of any school i would i would put our school up against any school in the world for for mobility wow. every week we gain three or four students and lose Gosh. two or three students and over the course of this year we've gained 75 students and lost 50 just every week it's just the ottawa river is 100 meters away ottawa's half a kilometer away families just move back and forwards yeah. And so different provinces, different education systems, but right. they just, they, it's like crossing the streets and all of a sudden you're in a different province. Oh my God. And yeah, this is the only English school in our area. So they all, all come here. So, so just finding ways for, to get new families, new kids anchored into the school, have a sense of belonging. Yes. It's and not to say it's easy, but if you've had kids and families in your school for five years, 10 years, 12 years, you know the family you can you, you can support families you can yes. the relationships are so deep but when you don't have that luxury and most of your families are very transient you have to find new ways to connect 
and new ways, as I said, to anchor them into the classroom. Yeah. And when they're doing things through movement, through music, through food, and having fun, it, the engagement level, is, it gets qu quite high quite quickly. Oh, that's great. And you have a lot of new Canadian students as well, right? It's Something's happened in downtown Hull this year. Since Christmas, I'd say we've probably 15 to 20 students from overseas. And I don't know why, Brazil, Philippines, four oh. from the Ukraine, I can understand yeah. the Ukraine yeah. students coming to Canada and being in, in our area. Uh, Brazil, Mexico, United Kingdom, just every week. How do they how do they end up here? I get it when students are coming from Ottawa. I get yes. it when students were coming from northern Quebec for our indigenous families. They were coming down to the city to um parents were continuing their education. So they would bring the whole family. So at one point we had as many as a hundred, just over a hundred indigenous students at our school. Wow. So as a result, we had lunchtime activities of of drumming and dancing and and different indigenous activities. And we have an annual powwow. So things that make the school much richer mm -hmm. because we've just got such a diverse community. So it's 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 a lot of fun. And it's yeah. not easy, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Do you find that oh. like learning through play is overcoming that language or social barrier with the new Canadian students? Definitely, right. definitely. Because even when you watch that video of Miss Medley's grade three class of... Yeah. of focusing on structures and features in poetry and that movement and even if it's one or two descriptive words that are added into into the poem through that movement and through someone who doesn't speak English at all there's they're going to remember those couple of words through that movement and then they build on that right. through those daily daily lessons so yeah it's pretty par it's a powerful way to learn and it does transcend the uh the 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 level of spoken English or spoken French and and I'm sure Miss Medley and other teachers are creative to bring Spanish or Ukrainian or Portuguese or whatever whatever language that the students are coming to the school with into into the learning through play. That's amazing, David. This has been such an enriching conversation. I think I'm gonna end off with my last question, which is okay. still from the beginning, which now is the why. Like what drives you to do this with your school, to be so innovative? You could fully just sit at your desk and discipline kids all day, and yet you choose not to. I really want to know what, what's driving you. The, the why. The why, it's, it's probably too simple to explain because, because it, learning school, school supposed to be fun. It's it, it it is. It's it's a place of high expectations from teachers and parents. That some something's changed in society though in the last 10 plus plus years, probably longer, that the amount of play and the amount of time spent outdoors for children and adults, but for children has decreased significantly. And when kids aren't outdoors in play, when they're not in nature. Their, their development isn't unfolding the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. All those skills that kids to adolescents to adult adulthood were supposed to acquire were, were through play, through sports, through in the playground, climbing trees in the forest, figuring things out, building resiliency, building fairness when picking teams of multi-age groups in the in in the neighborhood. Everything was supposed to be done through play, tears. The, the the compassion, the empathy, all of that played out in in real and met, and metaphorical emotional playgrounds. Like it was supposed to happen there. So when that isn't happening where it was traditionally taking place, then the schools got to see that because we noticed it with kindergartens coming in, maybe being five, but not emotionally five, maybe emotionally three or four, and, and really having a difficult time in the four walls of a kindergarten class. Mm. So we just said, let's take them outside, let them move, let them play, let them get what they, they their development requires. And just looking at something and having an obvious response has helped us evolve into a school that has a full day kinder outdoor kindergarten program to more outdoors, for classes, learning through play, learning through nature. <clears throat> and the why is because I think we had to. 
Because if we didn't, these kids weren't going to reach their full human potential in terms of their development just unfolding the way it's supposed to, the way it was designed by nature. It might sound a bit corny, but that's the way it's supposed to take place. And if some of the steps of healthy child development are missing, then kids are going to have a more difficult time, not just in school, but in life in general. So we, we talk about school success in terms of academics, but we talk about life success, that's, that there's certain developmental pieces that have to, have to come into play or, or unfold the way that nature wanted them to. Otherwise, kids will struggle and they'll yeah. struggle at elementary school and they'll probably struggle beyond. So I think not to be too, too grandiose or big on, on this, but at, at the same time, I feel there's responsibility that should be placed on all schools to, to, to notice this and, and to realize that yeah, we can do things differently. We can have fun, but at the same time, close some of those gaps. Not every kid is coming to school with their backpack full, whether it's through the, the basic love and attention and attachment and healthy relationships and multiple caring adults in their lives. So the school has to do something different to ensure that all kids have this, have, maybe not, the same chance, but have a good chance of being successful. I totally that would be the why. Yeah, I absolutely understand that 100%. School is like the second caregiver to this child. And not only do you owe them an education, you owe them this building of a person mm -hmm. as a whole because they spend so much time there. And now yeah. <clears throat> we, owe them, like, really we owe them the a child. We owe them a childhood. We owe them that childhood. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. And I really like that you acknowledge that students not everyone comes with a full backpack that is a really hit home for me I 100% agree with you and I I've seen it in my own education I see it with the kids I know in my own life it's just assumed that they get everything else at home but the education but the curriculum learning and that's that's simply not true it's simply not it's, and if they're not emotionally filled up with all their that's love it. needs attachment attention needs that's then it. they can't be focused because they're in pursuit of those basic needs. Yes. They're in yeah. pursuit. And if you're, you're in pursuit, you're scanning and you're anxious and you're not focused. Yeah. So there's no learning taking place. Oh. It's like the hungry child. If a child is thinking about food or they've no lunch, they cannot pay attention. They cannot concentrate. So right away, it doesn't matter if you're the best teacher in the world and you've yeah. prepared the best lesson. If a child is distracted and not available for learning and focus, Learning's not going to take place. No, it's the hierarchy of needs, right? Yeah. Like you gotta, you gotta fill that first. Gosh. And then at the end of the day, outstanding teaching really helps as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that can't hurt. <laughs> that can't hurt either. <laughs> well, that's all the questions I have. I mean, to be honest, I totally agree. <clears throat> the the thing I wrote down, but that's okay. I. I just want to say thanks so much for this, David. This was a really, really great conversation for me. I hope it was good for was, you as well. It was really fun. You're you're yeah. great to talk to. You've just got oh, such thanks. positive, enthusiastic energy. And I, I just uh, I love the fact that you're part of this movement. I love it too. I feel very education. And it's yeah. and it's it is it, it this is not going to be isolated to a couple of, of schools that are part of a network. This is much bigger. Yeah. And, and for us on a society, societal level that this is required something's yeah. got to change because society's changed kids have changed the child development is different so schools have to adapt and if schools don't adapt to these changes to this new context then not all kids are going to get the education they deserve yes I absolutely agree and you know what I'm actually not even a student of education I'm I'm a psychology student <laughs> but I'm here because I 100% agree and I'm looking for a way to to contribute to this to this change and to this impact because I I agree it's really I, really necessary I think psychology is the most important course now when I if I could go back to 25 <laughs> years ago when I started teachers college yeah I did my undergraduate first but I didn't take any psychology courses the understanding the study of human nature and it's just it's it, maybe that's the rest of my career is going to be dedicated to it has been for the last decade of psychology and and understanding oh I got some good books to send your way David there are some, there are some really neat but, ones even on play and on like the development of a child 
I'm gonna I'm gonna let Trista know to lay into case some books. Okay, and do, do, Dr. Newfeld or Dr. Deborah McNamara, I'm sure you've heard of them or read about them at some point. It's just they've helped open my eyes and change my perspective on okay. schools through understanding healthy child development and the needs of a child to, yes. to adulthood. That's good to know. I'm going to include that in, in the series as well, because this is really for the other schools to see. And we have in our network, a lot of schools who aren't experienced and who, who are really just kind of dipping their toes in play. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why I really reached out because I think Pete's would be a great example to be like, hey, this is sort of how you get the ball rolling. And, and this is this is a possibility for you all. And this is how you can get there. And this is what inspires people to do this, et cetera. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to write it up. Um, I can definitely send it your way before throwing it on a website with your face on it. And, and okay. you know, <laughs> but uh, I'll, well, I'll definitely totally like trust um, whatever comes of, of this. I'm sure I've made a few big statements of mantras of changing education. But, oh, I'm 100% um, using the Seinfeld quote because that is. <laughs> Cool. all about nothing yeah <laughs> i've used that once or twice in my life i love it <laughs> i'm a huge seinfeld fan too so i i absolutely get it <laughs> okay brilliant and that was really fun talking today gladys same and here we'll david you thank soon. you so much please enjoy the rest of your school day i will indeed it's beautiful outside so it is. I get know. out there for recess okay <laughs> all bye right bye. take good care talk soon bye bye